Hi, welcome. Today, a quick tutorial on how to create a dripping and splatter effect in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you have watched my other videos, you probably know what I'm going to say first. Command J, or in other words, duplicate the original image. Next step will be to remove the current background by masking the subject. To skip this boring process, let me copy and paste a mask I created earlier. If you are interested in masking tips, let me know in the comments and I will share some tips with you. Because I copied the mask, let me move it to the copied image and of course enable it. If you look closely, the mask at the bottom is not very well. This is because we will mask away the whole lower body anyway for the dripping effect. Let me crop the image first. Now let's create a more suiting background by adding a rectangle and filling it with an elliptical gradient. To make the subject stand out more, let's choose a more bluish color. Once we are happy with the background gradient, the next step would be to create the dripping effect. The easiest way is to find a dripping image. I have found an image and I will paste it in. A link will be in the description. So once we have our dripping graphic, let's adjust it to the location where we want the dripping to start, in this case somewhere around the belly. Ok, there are now two routes we can go. The first one will be to adjust the existing mask of the image with the dripping. In this example, I have chosen for the second route, which is adding an additional mask to the image. We can do this by creating a group of the image. Now we can apply a mask to the group, which will be on top of the mask already on the image. In order to create the mask, let's invert it first. Next, let's add the top part by selecting it and filling it with white. Final step for creating the mask is to select the white and pressing the mask button on the layers panel. Let's position the mask to the exact location we want. Also, let's center the subject on the canvas. The image we use for the dripping mask is a bit harsh, so let's select the mask and apply a Gaussian blur to soften it up. If this is now too soft, you can sharpen it back using the sharpen filter. The right side of the image where the dripping starts does not look very natural. We can fix this by painting on the mask. Let's check the other side. That one looks good. Before we continue, let's zoom out and see the result of the dripping. To give the dripping effect a bit more body, let's apply a drop shadow effect on it. That looks much better. Now it is time to enhance the subject to make it pop more. We can achieve this with an adjustment layer. Wow, much much better. Now move the adjustment layer to the group so it only applies to the subject and not the background. What I like to do now is to give the subject more depth by darkening the shadows. Let's do this quick and easy by adding a curves layer to darken the shadows. Let's invert the curves layer and paint on specific parts where we would like the shadows to be darker. The before and the after. I think this looks much better. Now there are some highlights in the subject I don't like. We can add a pixel layer and paint on top of them. Select the color from the areas that are not exposed 
and use that to paint over the highlights. Also the face has some areas that are overexposed. Add another pixel layer and apply the same trick. Let's put this layer blend mode to darken and smoothen the colors a bit for better blending. Have a look at it now. I think it's definitely an improvement. Let's name the layers so we know why we put them there for future reference. Ok, some final fixes on the highlights at the bottom area of the subject. I think the dripping is now finished. Let's move on to the second part of the tutorial, adding splatters. We are going to use the same technique as dripping. Just use a splatter image from the internet. A link will be in the description. Let me copy the first one. And now the second one. Let's duplicate the first one and use it to create more splatters by moving and rotating it. If you think the splatters are now too much, you can mask them and remove the splatters. For a nice effect, you could also mask out with a low flow brush so you get some splatters that have less opacity. Let's group them together so we can recolor them. To recolor them, let's add a recolor adjustment and move this adjustment to the splatter group. As you can see, the recolor does not work. Why? Because the splatters are pure black. How can we fix this? By adding an HSL layer to change the blacks to gray tones. Because when they are gray, the recolor will be able to color them. Let me fine tune the background color a bit before I show you a much easier way of recoloring. Ok, let's turn off the recolor and the HSL adjustment, so I can show you a much easier way. And actually it is very easy. Just go to the effect of the group, choose color overlay and set the color you want. That's it. If you want, you can also experiment with the gradient overlay. You can get very interesting effects by using the gradient overlay. For this image, I'll just keep it on a solid overlay. And then we're almost done. To wrap it up, let's do some minor curves adjustments and we're done. Before we look at the before and after, let me clean it up and reposition the layers. This is the before, how we started, and this is the end result, the after. I hope you liked this video. Until next time.